Welcome back to the next section of MYOB. It's all very well being in business, but probably the most important thing that most businesses want to do is to make sales so they've got an income. But without that income, you don't have anything to play with. <laughs> if we turn to the sales command center, we can see up there that within the sales section, we have a sales register, which is basically the listing of all the invoices we've raised and which are open. In fact, if I click on it, we'll have a look at it. And it says we've got all sales, that's all the invoices. We also have the ability in MYOB to enter quotes. In other words, someone says, what's it gonna cost for you to do this for me? You can send them a quote. They receive the quote and say, yes, I'd like you to go ahead. It turns that quote into an order, which is the next tag over. Once the order and the work has been done, you then raise an invoice. It becomes an open invoice waiting to be paid. And then once it's paid, it becomes a closed invoice. Unfortunately, at some stage, you may have to issue a return or a credit. For example, some faulty stock that you've sent out comes back to you. You may need to issue a credit note. We'll talk about that as well, but that again is handled by MYOB. So the first thing that's gonna happen is I want to create a new sale. Down the bottom of the screen, I have here a thing that says new sale. And if I click on that, up comes a sales invoice type layout. And I need here to put in the name of the customer. I'll need to put in a description of what it is I'm selling. And I'll need to put in here a name of a customer for which we'll have to go to the card file. I'll need to put in here a description of what it is I'm selling and I will need to put in the prices I'm charging. Down the bottom, it allows me to print the invoice or I can send it by email or by fax if I wish to. I've also got the ability to look at the journal transaction behind the invoice. I can also change the layout of the invoice. Now MYOB allows for me to provide services, which is the sample that we've got up here. This is a service type invoice. I can also sell items, which is covered partly here, but will be covered, we will need to look at the inventory section first. It also allows me to create a professional invoice. The professional invoice merely has a date in front of the description. I also have the ability to use time billing. For those of you wondering what is time billing, you obviously haven't been to see your solicitor lately. Your solicitor charges you for six minute units. What they do is they keep a timesheet. Every minute you spend with them, they will charge you. Every minute they spend working on your stuff, they will charge you. Every letter you write, or they write on your behalf, they will charge you. They track this for you and the rest of their clients on their timesheets. Their timesheets get converted into invoices and at the end of the month, out comes the bill. We also have in there a layout that's called miscellaneous. You cannot print a miscellaneous invoice. When would you use it? For writing off a small difference would be about the only thing I can think of. We'll stick with service for the time being, and we'll click OK, which takes us back to where we were. The register on the bottom there, again, takes me back to the register, the complete listing of all the invoices. In order to put in a sale, I need to create a customer. If I'm selling over the counter goods or services I have on hand, I maybe only need to put in one customer, a customer called Cash Sales. So all I do in the customer's box is I type in Cash Sales and I press Tab. It asks me then to select from a list. This is a list of all my customers. I can either add a complete customer and we'll look at doing that shortly, or I can simply click Easy Add. If I click Easy Add, it's gonna take in cash sales as a customer. 
The next thing across on the top there are the terms of this particular sale. The default terms that appear here are 2% net discount if paid within seven days and net 30 days. So my terms of sale, if he pays within seven days, I'll give him 2% discount. And if he doesn't, then the balance is due in the next 30 days. I can also select whether I'm putting in the amount as tax inclusive or tax exclusive. My normal rule for that is if I'm dealing with an end user, someone off the street, then I want them to know what the total amount they will have to pay for it is. If I'm dealing with a fellow tradesperson, what I might do is make it tax exclusive so that there is my charge and there is the GST which I also have to charge and hand over to the government. He, however, will claim that 10% GST that he's paying as a deduction from what he has to pay over to the government. So basically what he's interested in is what is it going to cost me net? That will be a tax exclusive. I had the ability to change the numbers, but once I've started, I'll leave it as one. The date, again, is today's date, and the customer's purchase order number, if I need to put it on there. In the description, I'll type in there a description of the services that I render for this particular customer, whatever they may be. And then it asked me for an account number. Looking up the account every time would probably be a little bit painful. Eventually, for each customer, they'll have their own particular account that we normally default to. In this particular case, if I click on the down arrow, it will tell me whether it's a service and repair that I want to record this as, whether it's construction income, renovation income, or sales from my store. It's a service and repair. And I select OK, and the account defaults into there. The amount I'm charging, let's say it's $100. There is no particular job involved. We'll look at jobs later on. And the tax is going to be GST. I can always change it to whatever it currently is. I would normally set it up as a default. I haven't set it up yet. I also have the ability to record which salesperson did this particular job. I can add my own comments or use one of the ones that's already supplied, such as final sale, happy holidays, thank you, we appreciate your business, anything you wish to use to personalize the invoices. I can also say how I'm sending it out. Am I going to send it by Australia Post? or by cash on delivery, or courier, or road freight, or whoever. And I can also put in there a promise date. If he's taking it with him, because I'm selling it now, I don't think I need to worry. The pay today, if I actually want to issue a receipt, I could fill that in. As it is, we're just gonna send the invoice out, and it'll be paid later. If I want to issue the invoice, if I go to print, I can click print. It will ask me whether I want to use the pre-printed invoice that's already loaded, or whether I want to select another form, in which case it will also tell me that the sale will be recorded before it's printed. I click OK. I select the form that I'm going to use, which might be the tax-inclusive plain paper. I like to use A4 paper and click print. It'll ask me where I want to print it, and I will click print, and away we go. That's all that is required to issue an invoice.